welcome you to Bayou Baptist Church and come to worship the Lord. Again, if you have a cell phone, please put it on mute, vibrate. And again, if you need to answer it, go outside and answer it. That's fine. Uh, just so you get it up uh, The other thing is, is uh, I've looked over things and unless somebody, unless I miss someone, but do we have any birthdays for the month of May? Anybody's birthday, because I have I, I've not had any of them as far as anybody here who's had a birthday or have a birthday for the month of May. Does anybody have a birthday in May? That's here. Okay, so, I mean, I, I just want to make sure, because I don't want to... I know someone else who has one, John Ezell, but he's not here. <laughs> and so, I just want to, just don't want anybody to feel like slighted that we missed your birthday for month of May, because we recognize birthdays at the beginning of, uh, of every month, and I said, nobody's birthday. So, anyhow, so just keep that in mind, and we'll go with all that. And so, let's all stand in as our comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. 227. Praise him, praise him. <laughs>
and the father that would build it home, which they should in all churches. Because Father, we all serve the same. We were those that are unable to be with us this morning. We know that we have some that are working. Father, I'm sure they have probably some to do. Bless them where they are and let them know that they are in our hearts and in our prayers. We will have eyes that he brings the words you put upon his heart. Let all our hearts be open. Let our ears be open. Let us receive your word. Let us grow from it. Take charge, Father. Lead us. Guide us. Direct us. It is in thy son's precious name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, seated. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are here with us this morning. And I hope you do feel welcome and that we come into the house of the Lord to worship, praise, and glorify Him. In the bottom of your morning worship, you'll notice a few announcements that are going to be taking place for the month of May. Um, today, of course, is our Mother's Day banquet. All are welcome to stay. Even if the man, even if you haven't brought anything, just stay. Don't feel bad about it. Just, just please stay and enjoy and, and have fellowship one with another. And we do have quite a bit of food back here, and it's good. And um, so we welcome all to stay afterwards as we have our banquet. Next uh, Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day itself, so keep that in mind. Uh, I don't guess this is an era. They said the last day of school here uh, is May 22nd. Is Yay! That... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the teacher, not the student. Hallelujah! But she's saying hallelujah for two reasons. One is not only the last day of school for her, but she's also retiring from teaching. Well. I don't know about retiring, but I'm not going back next year. Isn't that retiring if you don't go back next year? No. She's not bad. She's not bad. I'm a little young to retire. I'll talk to her. I'll answer. Only father and daughter can do that. Anyhow, last day of school, have a day, 22nd. Then you'll be yelling for the 23rd the next day. Yeah, we'll be there the whole day on the 22nd. We'll be there the 23rd. Yeah, and then after that, it'll be it. Huh? Then they kick it down. Yeah, they kick it down. So, anyhow, so that, that'll take care of that. Uh, the 23rd, the next day, which is a Thursday, Men's Fellowship uh, at 6 30, we'll be meeting at the Golden Dragon on God's Boulevard, Chinese. Uh, so, uh, for those who like Chinese, and they got some other things I think there, but mostly Chinese stuff. So if you like that, uh, we will be meeting on the 23rd, uh, that Thursday, 6.30 at the Golden Dragon. Um, the 27th, that Monday uh, following, uh, or weekend of course, is Memorial Day weekend, uh, 25th, 26th, and 27th, uh, Memorial Day weekend, so keep that in mind. I know a lot of people start traveling as four days, and, Traffic sometimes is hectic and everything, but keep in mind that will be the 27th, will be Memorial Day. Uh, if anybody would like a copy, I have paperbacks that sent from the Southern Baptist uh, Cooperative Office. They sent us a whole bunch of um, Holman's paperback New Testament, uh, from Matthew to Revelation. If you would like one, you can help yourself to one or more. Uh, again, it's just paperback, and it's just the New Testament. Um, so it's Holman's um, version, which is okay. Uh, so if you, if you like this, and if you would like one, they're on top of the organ here in the box. You can take one of many. If there's some people that you know that you would like to even uh, hand them out to and give to, that's fine. Uh, as far as presenting, uh, this was sent to us with the... Uh, with us, you know, giving it out to people who would like to have a New Testament Bible paperback. So if you want one, feel free to help yourself afterwards and, and have one. Uh, as far as they'll be there. Any other announcements we need to be aware of or anything else going on or taking place? If not, they'll come and meet us in another hymn. 
turn to help number eight. Now, ladies, you know, we got to say something to talk about this young lady to retire. I've always wondered what retire means. I've been tired all my life. I'm like retire, you know? So we got I think the language is really nice sometimes. And we learn it from going you know, to pick the teacher like that. <laughs>
And he was uh, persecuted, and also he was uh, basically had a hard time coming up because of his view was not in line with the Catholic Church of his time. So keep that in mind. And sometimes just go back and read the words of the mighty fortresses of God. The what he does is he gives glory to God and the fact that through Jesus Christ we have salvation. And it is by grace and not of works. And that was his whole premise there. And that even the power over Satan is by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and not by our might or our own viewing as well. So there's the thing that you know sometimes you may not get the tune you're right. It's awesome words. And go back later and just read what he wrote uh, concerning salvation and how indeed it was through Jesus Christ. In the way of prayer and prayer requests, in the back of your bulletin, there are a few requests and prayers. I ask you to remember these and others as well. Uh, in prayer, all the men and women, the military and their families, continue to pray for them and remember them uh, also in prayer. Uh, prayers of Thanksgiving. Gloria is doing fine. She had surgery this past Monday for hernia, and now she's doing okay. So just continue to remember Gloria in prayer. I'd ask you to remember this, uh, Dolores and Ginger and Alan and them as well. Uh, others in prayer, do pray for all the people we want to continue to remember who are dealing with cancer and cancer-related issues. Uh, Alex, Mark, uh, Linda Green, uh, Ray, Crystal. Remember these in prayer. I pray for them and as well as others who are dealing with different uh, uh, cancer and cancer-related issues as well. Other prayer requests that you would like to share with us this morning? Thanksgiving, concern, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning, anyway. Melissa? Uh, my friend Lucy Garcia, she was going to be pregnant and went for ultrasound last week, and the baby's heart had stopped. Um, so she had a DNC Saturday morning. Okay. I think I'm going Lucy. Lucy? Remember, remember Lucy and her family in prayer. They, they are dealing with it for sure. And I have files this week. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, finals. Lots of studying. Great for you. We show them. Yes. Thank you. Also, continue to remember um, Charles and David Jason Dow and Stephen and the rest of the family. Yeah. Uh, lost their funds. Yeah, uh, <coughs> next, uh, across the street neighbor is Mr. Charles and uh, his wife Betty. There, that was their daughter that was that was uh, killed on that um, on a train on that train tracks one week ago. And, uh, so just pray for the family, remember them in prayer and what they're dealing with, and pray for Charles and Betty. Both of them have health issues. Uh, Charles has dementia. And Betty has some problems as well, so pray for both, or remember both of them in prayer on the day of our dealing with so we sure will. Remember y'all in prayer, and, and we'll go on forth with y'all, and y'all have that issues as well, too. And also, Zach has finally just come to me for remembering him. Okay. Melissa and Zach. Okay, we sure will. Well. I'm not going to Sandy and get it and I on. Is this a secret? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know until. It's not a secret. Yep. <laughs> You're going to look like you It's I'm just ha I'm having a little um, benign fatty tumor removed from my abdomen. Okay. It's been getting bigger and they want to take it out. So okay. I'm having that done. <clears throat> I'm doing a big I haven't done a big Okay, so I'm sorry. In the hospital way I want that? Yeah. Okay, all right. So remember, you in prayer as you will be having that done this Wednesday. Sure will. Others? Renee? Yes, remember mom and other family members as well, and remember you and the family also. Sure will. Others? Just pray for each other, remember each other in prayer. We can pray for guidance, for leadership, for help, for all. Uh, just again, remember the many different people that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments. 
uh, the many things that are going on, of course, with uh, not only health issues, but also family issues or uh, things that are taking place maybe at home or at work or even the struggles we have within ourselves. Pray for guidance, for leadership, and for help, uh, for families, for self, or different other things that are taking place. Uh, just pray for that. Unspoken, many unspoken prayers, lift up in prayer. Uh, pray for that. Traveling mercies for all who travel and are traveling. Pray for traveling mercies for all and for all that's dealing with. All in the nursing homes and hospitals. Uh, of course, Miss Hattie Carter, or Miss Camerwood, and all who are nursing homes and hospitals. Remember them in prayer. The many senior adults and the many things that go on with them and their health or things that go and take place. Pray for them and remember them also in prayer. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning. We do thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for being with us, for helping us, and for watching over us. We pray for your guidance and for your leadership in our lives. We pray where there is health issues and there are health problems. We pray for healing according to your will. We pray for grace, mercy, and help. Where there are struggles, where there are difficulties, at home, work, or wherever it may be, even within ourselves, we pray you'll help us. The temptations we face daily, the different things that we battle with and we try to overcome, and sometimes, Lord, we just don't. Help us with these battles. Help us with these temptations. Help us to overcome. We pray for your grace, for your mercy, and for your, and for your power. We pray for all the prayer requests that have been mentioned this morning, that you'll be with each and every one, and that things may be done according to your will. We pray for strength, for guidance, and for help. We pray for traveling mercies for all who travel and are traveling. Be with us and help us. Again, we thank you. Again, we look to you for help. And Lord, we pray for the lost, the many who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. To understand his outcomes and leads us in our offertory hymn. 66, day by day.
God, again we come before you. We thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for being with us and for helping us. Lord, we come now and at this time and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, most humbly, that you will see to it that all that is collected is used as the burdens of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He will change a person from what they were 
to what he wants them to become. And it's an awesome thing what the Lord can do. So don't think you can't. You can't. For remember, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. He takes this woman and transforms her. The Israelites are getting ready to cross the Jordan River a second time. The first time they tried to cross, they disobeyed. And they wandered in the desert for 40 years. So this is a new generation. Being led by Joshua, as Moses had died, buried. And now Joshua is going to lead the people into the promised land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Amazing. So what does Joshua do? He sends two spies into the land, not to see if he can, but to look over the land, especially Jericho. He wants to be prepared as he goes into the land of what God has promised the promised land. He is not questioning here, should he go? They're going to go. They have learned their lesson. And now he sends two spies there to look over the land. And as they go into the land, especially again, the first city they will come in contact with is Jericho. And so they go into the house of this prostitute by the name of Rahab. And here by the power of God, we will see what takes place. And we can learn from this, and we can apply it to our lives today. This is a bright example, again, of what God can do in the life of a person who truly puts their faith and trust in the one true God. Again, it's amazing. You know, many people, they, they read these stories and they miss the grace of God. They miss the transforming power of God in the life of a person. And yet they fail to see what God did back then. He still does today. He is still working in the lives of people, even though all around us we see evil, we see many things going on. God is still in the transforming business. He's still changing hearts and lives and people. We can do it. Look at what happens. First of all, notice in verses 1 through 7, notice her courage. Notice the courage of Rahab. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shinnom. Go and look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went. They entered the house of a prostitute by the name of Rahab and, and stayed there. The king, the king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here to, tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent them this message to Rahab. They, yeah, they, they saw him going into her facility, her place, whether you know, it was a bar or whether it was, whatever it was. They realized that they went into there. Bring out the men to, who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hid them. And she said, yes, the men came to me, but I do not know where they have come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gates, the men left. I don't know the way they went. Go after them quickly, you may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hid them under the stalks of flax. She had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that led to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gates were shut. So it's interesting. Here, her courage. What does she do? She opens her home to these men. She protects them. She hides them. She basically is putting her own life in jeopardy. All for the sake of these men. If the spies were found in a house, what would have happened to her? Well, she would have been dealt with and probably dead. Now, understand that Jericho was a fortified city. It was a city built around with big walls. And they had one gate going in and one gate going out. So when it said the gates were shut, that meant that the city was surrounded by a big high wall where only one way in and one way out when the gate was done. 
And so here Rahab takes the two men and she hides them in the roof and she protects them. Now, Rahab is taking a very courageous stand for a people she absolutely knows nothing about. She's never met these men. She knows nothing about the Israelites, nothing about these people, other than what she has heard over the years. And we're going to see that in a minute. They've heard many stories about it. She's never met these men. And so, Rahab became a friend to the people of God. Even though she knew, by doing such a thing, if they came and searched our house and if they would have found the men, her life would have been in jeopardy. She dared to put her life on the line for these men. It showed her courage. Did she lie? Yes, she lied. She took a stand for the things of God rather than the things of the world. The important thing here was that she believed in them and what they did. Today, we need to be like Rahab and be courageous when it comes to our faith and what we know to be true. We need to take a stand for the things of God. Even if it means opposing friends, family, or whomever, even our co-workers. You know, it's a hard thing to take a stand for what you know is right when everybody else is against you. It's not easy. It's very difficult. And here Rahab, understand, is the only one who's taking a stand for the people of Israel. Everybody else looking for them. Hard thing. Again, this is not easy for Rahab. But what does she know? She knows that this is the right thing to do. And I feel being led by God, she is giving aid, comfort, and help to these men. Because God, I feel God is putting upon our heart to do this. God is dealing and working with her. And she knows. The best thing for me to do is take a stand with these men than against them. Even though I may be the only one, understand, today it takes more courage to take a stand, even if it's by yourself, for something you know that is right, than to go with along with other things that you know is wrong. Today there are far too many things that people are taking a stand for that is wrong rather than taking a stand and saying, this is the right thing to do or here's what we need to do. There are too many sins today out there that people are saying are right and that we know is wrong. People, believers, we are not taking a stand. We're not being courageous. We're not taking a stand as we should on what the word of God. And we don't hate people. Let's get it straight. We're not people haters. If we don't tell people a sin is a sin, then is it not we're doing more harm than good to people by relating to them and not telling them the truth and telling them, look, what you're doing is wrong. And then one day you have to stand before God and you have to give an account of this. Then you stand before God and you say, well, Frank or Bill or Jim or Mary or whoever didn't tell me that was wrong. They should have said something. See, first of all, understand, believe me, it is our responsibility, even if everybody else is going the wrong way, to let people know this is the way we should be going. This is the way we should be living. Here's the things we need to do. It's not that we hate people. We just don't want to see people die, stand before God, and then be thrown into hell because of sin. It's a terrible thing. I know many people don't like to think of it. But think about it. Our life, how long does it last? 50 years, 60 years, 70 years? Maybe at the most, 80 or 90 years. And then what are you going to do? See, we have to stand before God. And here, Rahab, she is taking the courage and she is standing before the people of God. She's saying, I'm standing with you. I don't know much about you. I only heard stories about you, 
but I'm taking a stand. I'm going to help you and be there for you and be there with you as well. And it's very important to take a stand. Paul, I mean Peter, took a stand. He and John, he took a stand before the Sanhedrin, who told them to stop telling things about the gospel, about Jesus Christ and what he has done. And listen to what Peter said, the answer that he gave them concerning what he must do in Acts chapter 4, in verse 18 following. They called them in again, that is, they, and they commanded them, and they commanded them not to speak or to teach uh, at all about the name of Jesus. Now, the same thing is happening today in our country and even here as well, where being told, now you can't preach about this guy named Jesus. You can't say things about him. What was what was Peter and John's response? So Peter and John replied, Judge for yourself whether it's right in God's sight to obey you rather than God, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. You see, they knew what the right thing was doing. They took a very courageous stand and said, this, this is what we need to do. This is what we should do, because we know that this is the right thing to do. We have the right thing to do. And that's the telephone of Jesus Christ. Rahab is doing the right thing. She is on the side of the people of God. And she's being commended for it. That's her courage. Now, second thing we see is her concerns. She has concerns. Now, how many of us have concerns or have different worries or ideas or certain things of things because of Christianity and we have these concerns. Well, she has concerns. Notice in verses 8 and following, she, she has some things that she's concerned about. Before the spies laid down the night, she went up on the roof and she said to them, I know that the Lord, that is Jehovah, has given this land to you and, and a great fear has fallen on us. So, and so that all who live in this country are melting with fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea, or when you came out of Egypt, and what they did at Sihon, and oh, and the two kings of the Amorites east of Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted, and everyone's courage failed because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above, Right below. Now, please swear to me by the Lord that all that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to me, and that you will save us from our death. Our lives are your lives, and then assured it. If you don't tell anyone what we're doing, we will treat you we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. You see, our concerns here. Now, interesting. Rahab was confident about their power. She was confident of who it was that they were battling. They wasn't just battling the Israelites. They were battling Jehovah God. They knew it. She wanted assurances for both her and her family. What was she doing? She was putting her faith in the one true God. Unseen, or even unheard of as far as anything. Now, she heard about the powers and knew that indeed he was the one true God. Notice she said, he is the one true God in heaven and earth. And notice, these things that they heard about happened 40, 50 years ago. Because remember, they already wandered in the desert for 40 years. Before they even left, before they, after they left Egypt. So you can imagine, 40 years later, 45 years later, 50 years later, I'm sure she's a, a young lady here. So that what this place even, even happened before she was born. It's amazing that they heard about all of these stories of what took place, and only one person out of that whole city, or one family out of the whole city, is putting their faith and trust in God. She is walking by faith, not by sight. She has not seen any of it. She was not the first-hand witness of it. She was the only one in the city that realized, hey, rather than trying to fight 
when we did fight, I not join her. When I become a part of her. So here she is. She is putting her trust in the one true God. What is your concern today? What is your worries? What are you worried about? We all have concerns, I'm sure we all have worries. Here her concern, her worry was, she didn't want to be killed. She didn't want to be taken into captivity. Here, she wanted to be a part of it. Rahab is acting on her belief in the one true God. She knows that what they're dealing with here again is not just men, but the power of children for God. What people don't realize today is what we're dealing with is not people, it's God. It is the forces of Satan. Remember what it says in Ephesians. Our battle is not against one another. It's against the evil spirits of this world. It's against Satan. It's against those who are going against God. It's better to be on the side of God than on the side of Satan, who is in a losing battle. Is there any force greater than that of God? There is none. There is none. That's been proven time after time after time. But yet you know something? People will continue to battle God time after time after time and think we're going we're gonna to be victorious. They tried it. They tried it with the Son of God. And it didn't work. Jesus was victorious. They didn't learn their lesson. And you know, it's sad. People don't even learn today. You can't fight against God. As long as you can be sure the God. It's a no-win situation. What, you want examples? Go back and read the Word of God. Many people have tried and they lost. Even Satan tried and they lost. He was kicked out of heaven when he tried to usurp the power of God. No, not of heaven. He and a quarter of angels thrown out of hell, heaven because of their sin. No win situation. Rahab here is acting upon her belief in the one true God. She says it. She says, I we have heard about it, the hearts of hell, and I know that the Lord your God is the God in heaven above and the earth being below. There's no other God. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes unto the Father except for me. There's only one person. And that, go, and that way is through Jesus Christ. What is she doing here? The main thing is the main thing. She's putting her allegiance with God. Isn't it not what Jesus had told us as well when he tells us not to be worried, not to be concerned about things? He tells us in Matthew chapter 6. And I know what you and me do we work, but he tells us not to. He tells us, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or drink or your body or what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, and they do not sow or reap or store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Which of you, by worry, can add a single hour? And then he goes on to say, Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be yours and will be with you as well. You see, that's the problem I think we have sometimes. We lose focus and sight of what we're, what, we, what we're doing here. We need to focus on what Jesus Christ, focusing in on him and his power and his might. You see, Rahab is doing the first thing first. She is seeking things of God. Main thing. It's the main thing. And the main thing is seeking God and His power. And that's what Rahab here is doing. Many times we lose focus in this. And we're not focusing it on, on the power of the Lord. We lose sight sometimes and we worry needlessly. Rahab is seeking the things of God rather than what's there now. And she knows 
that power that they have cannot compare to that of the power of God. He is all powerful. So she goes and makes an agreement with him. That brings us to the last thing in verses 15 to 24. Notice her commitment. We've seen her courage. We've seen her concerns. Notice her commitment. Notice what is said and done between the two. So, she led them down by the road to the window where the house lived, she lived in was part of the city wall. Now she had said to them, go to the hills, and so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there for three days until they return and go on your way. Then the men said to her, the oath we made, you made us swear you would, would be binding on us. Unless we entered your land, you have tied the scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. Unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers, and all your family into your house. If anyone goes outside the house in the street, his blood is on his own head. We will not be responsible. As for anyone who is in the house with you, his blood will be on our head. Him, a hand is laid on him. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the hope you made you swear to us. Agree to me. Let it be as you said. So she went away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. When they left, they went into the hills and stayed there for three days. The pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. Then the two men started back and went out of the hills, forward the road, river, and came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told them everything that had happened to them. Then they said to Joshua, The Lord has surely given us the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Now, she entered into what we call a covenant relationship with the people of God. Her actions proved that she was a lady who put faith in the one true God. There before their eyes, she was she has changed. Rahab now has changed from basically an ungodly woman to a woman now who believes in God. She knows that who they are and what they are and what God and the, and the one true God. She is no longer the same person she was when they first met her. God has changed her heart. God has changed her life. Now she belongs <clears throat> to Jehovah God. He probably tells her relatives, there's a mother, her father, her brothers and sisters, or probably all in the house with her, as well as the servants, we don't know, about the coming judgment. She puts the scarlet cord out in the window. And by faith, she believes them as well as the things of God. Her salvation now, her life, is in the hands of the one true God. And she knows this. Today, I like we had Rahab. I only heard stories. All of these things that I have read in here, that's all I have too. She too only heard the stories. She heard about what took place and what had happened. And she probably heard it from someone else, seeing to where she wasn't a witness of it or anything else, but yet she believed it. I too believe all that is written here in the Word of God, that it's all true. And again, you've heard me say over and over and over, if you believe one part of the Bible, believe it all. Don't take parts out and say, well, I don't believe this and I don't believe it. All of it is either all of it is all God's Word or none of it is all God's Word. It's either we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ we're not saved at all. Because then it has to be by works. And the Word of God says there's no amount of works that we can have that can save us. Mia Rahab puts her faith in the one true God and what she's heard about Him and her people. Jesus Christ died on the cross some 2,000 years ago. And He died for our sins. And He says all who repair their sin and come to truly know Him will be saved. Why? Because of what he did at Calvary. Because of his death on the cross. You know, this is not to scare people. But judgment day is coming. It's coming. 
Many people today may not believe it. She knew it. She knew Judgment Day was coming. And she knew that the, kid, that the people of Israel would come and even overcome and be victorious. She knew the power of the Israelites because of the one true God. I stand here today and tell you that even though this world may reject Christianity, true Christianity, and even Jesus Christ, and even the one true God, every day is coming. It's going to happen. Whether it comes in our time or not, I don't know. But all it tells us is be ready, be prepared. Like the ten virgins, five are ready, five are not. How is that to be? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. With Rahab, it was that simple. She put her faith in the one true God, unseen. And what happened? She was victorious in the end. She was the one of one that was saved, the only one in her family. It tells us. But Joshua was there, Rahab the prostitute with her family, and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lived among the Israelites to this day. Again, what took place in her life? She became a believer. She became the mother of Boaz, the grandmother of Jesse, and the great great grandmother of David. But even more importantly than that, she became a child of God forever. In her line and her lineage, she was part of that of the Messiah, of the Christ. If you haven't already, Commit your life to Jesus Christ. And this is Rahab did. Walk by faith, not by sight. Even if everyone else is going the opposite way, don't go down the wrong road. They can go down the narrow road. I know that in the end, you will be victorious. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come to you, we thank you, Lord, for what you have revealed to us and what you have shown us through the power, through your power with Rahab. Lord, if there's anyone here today whom you are talking to, dealing with, and revealing to them, may they come and walk by faith, repent of their sin, and trust you that by your power, your might, they can be changed, they can walk life anew, and they can be your child. I pray that you will reveal it to them and then be coming to you today and may you get all glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. Turn to hymn number 311. As we sing all four stanzas in our parting hymn as well as in our invitation hymn, if God is speaking to you, you come. Let Jesus come into your heart.
again, as you've heard me say over again, we have a wonderful message and a wonderful word to give to all people. This whole message of the future is found in Jesus Christ. Relate that. Be strong, be courageous, stand for the Lord. I know you may have concerns, as this Ray has had. But those concerns and give more to the Lord. Commit your life, your heart, and your all. Know that He might be found. We welcome and we hope that all those days we will have our fellowship, our Mother's Day banquet in the back, and hope that you will stay. If not, may you have a blessed and a good day in the morning. Wednesday night, Bible study, 7 o'clock, back in the kitchen. All of would like to come. There's always next week, even though it's Mother's Day. We'll have Sunday School 915, morning worship at 1030. All are welcome invited. Again, if you're not staying, we hope you will. You have a blessed day. Now, we're going to go to Heavenly Father, again, we come before you. Thank you, Father, for your done, Lord. Thank you, Father, for salvation that you sent our way. And again, Father, I pray for anyone who doesn't know you as their personal Savior, that, Father, their heart will touch this day. And that, Father, see you with plan. And for all those that do know you, this Savior, that, Father, they'll continue to grow and grow and grow in strength and understanding your word. Be with us now. Lead us, God, and direct us. In thy son's precious name we pray. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. Feel free to call, but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.